the bald eagle, a symbol of freedom and power. But how do we translate this majestic bird onto the canvas? Well, we start with the basics, the block in. Today, I'm going to show you how I block in the feathers on my painted version of a bald eagle. By the end of this video, you will have learned why the block in is essential, what colors to select, which brushes to use, and what mistakes to watch out for. And as a little added bonus at the end, I'll give you a sneak peek of this painting with a bunch of the details in place, which will be covered in future videos. So are you ready to elevate your painting skills? Let's get started. Why is the block in so important? As previously mentioned in my grid and sketch video, and go check it out if you haven't seen it yet, the foundation you build determines the strength of what you create. And in the world of art, this particular stage is called the block-in. Now this step is important for setting up the framework of your art piece before diving into the details. And trust me, <laughs> I want to do nothing but to dive into those details, but jumping the gun will potentially leave you with proportion and composition issues or a lack of depth and realism. And you might find yourself having difficulty in correcting mistakes down the road. And that's just to name a few downsides of getting into details too fast. So by putting in the general shapes and tones, you can create a very strong blueprint for the feather details later on. By breaking down the painting process into bite-sized tasks, you're gonna feel more confident and in control of your painting. Or at least, that's the goal. Feathers can be quite challenging and a bit daunting. I've only done two bird paintings so far, which was the red robin and the sparrow. And even though the techniques are similar to painting fur, I was definitely nervous starting this part of the eagle as I feel I'm on unfamiliar territory. I still have a lot to learn. So if you're in the same boat, you're in the right place. So let's learn, discover and grow together. By starting with simple shapes and focusing on the bigger picture, you're giving yourself a solid framework to build on. And that way, you won't get lost obsessing over each little feather, every little detail, and potentially confuse or paralyze yourself. To sum up why this stage is so important, well, blocking in simplifies the whole process. The keyword here is simple. Instead of diving into each tiny feather right off the bat, which I always want to do, you just block in larger color masses and shapes. It's like creating a roadmap for the details that you can add later. So note to self, patience, Mimi, patience, you got this. Let's talk about colors, what colors to select and how to mix them. Did you know? that the bald eagle can have up to seven different shades of brown in its feathers? Insane, right? I mean, maybe it's better not to do too much research beforehand. But when I pull up the reference photo, I can see the underlying color, which is indeed brown. Now, funny enough, I thought it would be more like a gray undertone, but it actually makes sense as bald eagles aren't born with those distinct white feathers. Around 12 weeks of age, they develop brown feathers and they remain brown for about three to four years. They will start to get their iconic white head until around four to five years of age. And by the time they are about five to six years old, they'll have reached their full adult appearance. But I digress. Let's remember that the goal during the block-in is not to focus on details, but to capture the overall color values, the tones, and the shapes. Now here is a big tip that I picked up from another YouTube artist, and man, do I wish I could tell you who it was. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But take your reference photo and blur it. That way, you won't be distracted by the intricate details, and you can focus more on the shapes, the color tones, and the direction. So if your reference photo is not digital, you can try squinting your eyes and looking at it from a bit of a distance. Now 
Before selecting your palette, try to find and pay attention to the natural colors and consider the following. Base colors. These are the primary hues that make up the feathers. Undertones. The underlying colors that influence the appearance of the base colors. And markings. Check for any patterns, spots, or stripes that require specific color choices. Now then, select the colors you want to use. And try to use a limited palette rather than 10,000 different colors. It will help you focus on the overall composition and it will avoid overwhelming your painting with too many colors. You'll be amazed what you can achieve. So by keeping only a few colors on your palette, you'll create different little families of colors, as I call it, because they all go well together because you mix just different versions of those selected colors. And that is going to result in a more harmonious piece in the end. Now, this is also known as color harmony. So less is more. Now here's a little tip. When mixing colors to your own choice of palette, think about temperature of the colors. Warmer tones, orange, yellow, red, some browns, they will create warm shadows and can enhance the vibrancy of colors. Cooler tones, like blue, purple, some grays, and also here some browns, will create cool shadows and can mute or desaturate the intensity of your colors. But in the blocking stage, you don't want to go too saturated or vibrant with your colors. Choose muted versions of your main colors because it's easier to build up intensity as you fine tune the painting in a later stage. So start with softer versions of your main colors and save the pure bright hues for detailing later. I personally tend to use Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber a lot for my block-in phase. They're easily darkened or lightened by adding black or white. And for this particular subject, the eagle, it worked really well. This is not always chosen carefully. I mean, I do accidentally grab the right colors at times and on other occasions, I completely and totally grab the wrong ones. What I did start doing though is keeping an art journal as I paint in which I write down what colors I use for that painting session, as well as the brushes and some random thoughts that I had whilst painting. It actually really helps me to keep track of concepts, ideas, colors, and I do really, really feel that it helps me avoid mistakes going forward. So if you'd like me to do a bit more of an in-depth video about this journal idea, shoot me a comment. You can create your color palette before you even start painting the subject. Now, because I work with acrylics and because they dry super fast, I mix as I paint. But if you work with oils, you can definitely pre-mix your colors. Personally, I am always a little jealous when I watch oil painters do this because it is a lot harder to do with acrylics. Now, there are mediums that you can add to help slow down the drying time, or you can use a wet palette well, I have tried neither one of these two options yet, so I can't tell you how well that works. My painting sessions are about one hour long, so the paint doesn't dry out too much. And a misting or spray bottle is a great tool to have on hand. But going back to this pre-mixing of colors, I love this idea, but I personally don't apply this at the moment. Another thing that is a good idea is to swatch your colors before you start your block in. You can do it on your palette, a piece of paper, in your sketchbook, or maybe on the edge or in the corner of your canvas. Full transparency here, it's another thing I don't do. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I do put a little swatch on the masking tape before going into my painting, but this is not done before any of my painting sessions. I do this during my sessions. But it is definitely a good tool to have in your tool belt, and I might try this in the future. I tend to do certain sections in one painting session because once I have a color mixed, 
I have a limited time before it dries, so I use it everywhere I feel I need it during my painting session. To get that exact or even a similar color mixed again the next day can be quite difficult to achieve, especially if it consists of many colors. This is where that previously mentioned art journal can come in handy, and you can write down the colors you mixed and the amounts you used. So, also something I should probably utilize a bit more going forward. Don't be afraid to experiment. The best colors for your painting may not always be the ones you initially expected. And don't be afraid to make mistakes either. The beauty of acrylic paint is that it's super forgiving. It dries fast and is easy to paint over top of. Well, if you're new here, I am a self-taught artist, so I have learned a lot and a bunch of these things along the way. So if all of this is brand new and seems overwhelming, take a deep breath. You don't have to be perfect and it's okay to make mistakes. Embrace your own artistic journey at your own pace as you discover and explore. You probably noticed the yellow on my palette, so let me explain why it's there. While the feather blocking was drying, I decided to tweak the beak since I wasn't happy with the color. That part isn't shown in this video, but I just wanted to mention why those colors popped up. And these colors were not used for the feather blocking. Now let's get back to the feathers. Moving on to brushes. What brushes to use and what techniques to use? When blocking in bird feathers, or any general blocking really, you'll want brushes that can handle large areas and create loose strokes. So my advice is to start with larger brushes and gradually change to smaller ones. Which brushes you might ask? Well, here are some popular choices. Flat brushes. These are great for laying down large areas of color and creating broad strokes. Round brushes. Round brushes can be used for both large and small areas, and they're good for creating curved lines and, yes, details. So this brush is great for later use as well. Filbert brushes. These are similar to flat brushes, but have a rounded edge, which can create softer transitions between colors. Well, the brushes I chose for this part are the filbert and the round brush, as I really like the soft edges these give me. I also use a mop brush as well to soften out my edges even more. A flat brush is great if you don't mind hard or crisp edges, but that was not what I was trying to achieve. Regarding the brush size, well, that is a bit dependent on the size canvas you're working on and the size of your subject, but for a block-in, I suggest using larger brushes as it is ideal for quickly covering larger areas without having to worry about little details. It's about the shapes, the direction, and mid-tone colors at this stage in the game. Whilst doing the block in, focus on making broad strokes. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, these are wide, large, and general strokes. Sounds vague, right? I know. And that's exactly the purpose of these strokes. They are to suggest, keyword here is, suggest the overall shape and direction of feather groups. Also, try using loose strokes. Keeping it loose and keeping it simple. 
This is not a place to put tons of pressure on your brush or to get too uptight and rigid with your strokes. The looser, the better. And it might help to hold your brush closer to the end of the handle versus holding it near the ferrule. And if you don't know what the ferrule is, it is the metal or sometimes plastic part that connects the bristles to the handle. And finally, put in feather-like strokes. Well, this sounds more complicated than it really is. Feather-like strokes are light and short strokes with a round or filbert brush to block in feather directions without too much detail. And the goal is to mimic the flow of feathers without overcomplicating things at this stage. And this can also be applied to a fur block-in. It is a similar approach. As mentioned earlier with the color selection, don't be afraid to experiment with different brushes. The best brushes for you will depend on your personal preferences and the specific style you're trying to achieve. So be creative, make mistakes, and don't be too hard on yourself. Just have fun with it. And remember, the goal of the block in is not to create every single feather detail. Focus on the overall patterns and textures. So to sum it up, flat, filbert and round brushes in various sizes will cover most of your needs for the blocking of the feathers. Start with larger and medium sized brushes to lay the foundation and then work towards smaller ones later on in your painting for more precision. With these guidelines, you should be able to tackle your own blocking with a bit more confidence, but I do want to point out some common mistakes to watch out for. These are not to punish yourself with, but more like a, oh yeah, this is probably not a good idea. And then go on and change your plan of action, fix your mistake, and continue on creating a beautiful piece of art. So what should you watch out for? Getting too detailed too soon try to avoid the temptation to add intricate feather details. It can be so tempting to pick out all the subtle variations of color and texture in the individual feathers, but at the block in stage, your focus should be on the overall tones and general direction of the feathers. I know it sounds boring and it feels boring at times for me too, but once the colors are blocked in and the structure is solid, then you can layer in the intricate details and refine the colors and get into the nitty gritty. It's okay to have the painting sit in the ugly face for a bit. Even though it feels uncomfortable, and trust me, I've been there. I'm always happy though in the end that I did not go into the details too fast because that can lead to you needing to go back in and adding in shadows or color changes that could have already been in place if you just had taken the time to work on a proper block in. Over mixing colors and over complicating the palette. Over mixing colors can make them look muddy and dull. This can make it very hard to see the different shades and details in your painting. I know that I mentioned that slightly desaturated and perhaps boring colors are better for your blocking, but if your values are off because the colors are overly mixed, it is difficult to distinguish the different shapes or feather groups or the direction of your feathers. And on top of that, it will be hard to achieve depth and realism later. So the block in phase is meant to be quick and efficient. Well, spending too much time mixing colors or trying to get specific shades, it will slow you down and can disrupt your workflow. By simplifying your palette, it makes it easier to work quickly. Personally, I get too distracted with tons of colors on my palette. I'm like a dog seeing multiple squirrels at once. So the main message is, Keep it simple and clear. Stick to just a few colors, and this will help create a strong base for your painting without making it look muddy or confusing.
not stepping back. Make sure to step back regularly to check your overall progress. And this is not just meant for the blocking phase. I do it with every painting session. It's easy to lose sight of the big picture when you're focused on a small area or if you are super close to your canvas. It helps you evaluate your work. Are my major shapes, my proportions and color arrangements all working together like one big happy family? Well, without stepping back, you might end up overworking some parts and ignoring others, which can make your painting look very unbalanced. So by taking a moment to pause, you can spot issues and address them immediately. By skipping this step, you might have a lot of things to fix later on that you could have prevented by just taking a good look at your work from a bit of a distance. Now, once those next layers go on and more details are added, it is a heck of a lot harder to fix mistakes. Just remember, the block-in should be quick and simple, but it is super important for laying down a solid base. Once you've got that down, you can start adding all the fun stuff, like vibrant colors and those little details. And before you know it, you'll be well on your way to creating some stunning pieces of art. Now here is the sneak peek I promised at the beginning of this video. The painting is not done yet, but now you've got a little preview of what's ahead. And I'd be happy if you decide to join me in future videos where I'll show you how I get to this stage. Are your hands itching yet to get going on your own painting? Well, before you do that, I'd love to hear your feedback. What was your aha moment of today's video? What did you learn? And if you have any questions I didn't answer, be sure to let me know. I love to hear your comments. Meanwhile, feel free to check out any of my other videos on my channel. Thanks so much for joining me today. Stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye.